Hi all, a very interesting game has been highlighted to me by one of you. Uh, it was Levin Aureli against Richard Report. This is in the European Cup. This is played just on the 8th of November 2016. D4 from Levon. We have D5. So both of these players over 2700. Levon approaching 2800. He's 2795. Richard Report is 2730. So mega clash. C4. We see the Shigurin. Richard Report, Report is uh, very, very innovative in his openings. The Shigurin isn't regarded that favorably. It's not seen that much. Uh, but uh, let's see what happens. Knight c3, knight f6. And it's almost as if there's a, a poor relative of some sort of Grunfeld type position here. After c takes d, knight takes. Isn't black just setting himself up for tempo gains with e4? We see knight f3. Uh, one of the points here is revealed though. Black in this position uh, has an ingenious uh, method of equalization. It seems actually Livebook favors this next move uh, in terms of value, evaluation, but the two most frequent moves are Bishop G4 or Bishop F5. But this move is actually favored in terms of evaluation. It represents a pawn sack already. Yeah, it's, it's fascinating. D takes E5, the idea of Bishop B4, Bishop D2, and we've got kind of uh, a gamb a temporary gambit of this pawn, but it's uh, it it's kind of away from white's protection, so it can be picked up soon. You'd think e3 black castles. That's the clever idea here. Uh, it's easy for black to build up pressure on e5. We see queen a4. Bishop drops back. That frees up the knight, of course. Queen putting pressure on that bishop, so the knight is now putting pressure again on e5 without having to hold the bishop. Uh, we see queen f4, white's for the moment clinging on. Queen e7, the pressure is starting to be built again. And here we see h4. And it looks as though if black dares to carry on trying to just get his pawn back with rook e8, then maybe there's something savage going on with his king here. and. I'm going to go back to my interactive analysis method, by the way, to just check variations on the fly. I'm just going to show you. Uh, let's see. Let's have a quick look and explore myself. Rookie one, sorry, rookie eight. Well, we have moves here like bishop c4, apparently. And if black dares take, I think, well, there's trouble on f7. So that's one of the points. Yeah, it's it's getting a bit tricky to get that pawn back. But a very, very interesting move is played instead. Just f6, just making it a gambit. Uh, so incredible stuff. Uh, e takes is a real gambit. But look at the ferociousness of black's pieces here, especially with that h4. It looks as though white's Levon Aronian hasn't castled. He hasn't even developed his bishop on f1. This seems to be a good gambit position. Very good gambit position because black's got that f file pressure. We see a check, king h8, bishop d3, finally. And actually, it's immediately challenged, which I guess safeguards white's king as well against any nasty threats. Bishop takes, rook takes, knight g5. Yeah, very, very interesting play by both sides here. Uh, now we see knight e5 hitting the queen, queen e4 pinning the knight. Queen d7, unpinning and protecting the rook. White castles, rook e8, with the threat here of things like knight f3 check winning the queen. Queen drops back, the knight is repulsed, goes to e4. But here we see a very interesting attacking position. Black, a pawn down, of course, but is able to just crudely but effectively crudely but effectively you qualify that it's not so negative here it's just going for white's king here because how does white defend h4 now if he plays g3 then there's things like knight f3 check uh, to be worried about or just queen h3 in fact let's have a look actually just 100 check here uh, 
<clears throat> so saying in this position g3 the most incisive might be apparently the check to go here all right that's hitting the knight and all sorts of things where's the knight actually going in this position yeah that, that's pretty deadly okay so uh, we have off this rook h5 we have knight g3 just giving back the pawn so we've got a fantastic position here not even a pawn down so this is great for the dynamic player this this sort of game with the novel opening the shigurin seeing you know this this early e5 this is a beautiful position to have uh rook f8 which supports things uh well put more pressure on the f file bishop c1 queen g4 yeah what's happening here it looks as though there's going to be uh, some sort of direct combination soon rook d5 queen g5 protecting the knight queen e2 the rook is kicked but now we have an astonishing move in this position i wonder if you can guess it if i give you uh five seconds to pause the video and try and check out what black should do in this position it really is kind of astonishing and we're gonna have to unravel why it works after as well how it works so five seconds starting from now to pause the video okay black played rook h1 check <laughs> now one key point is knight takes there's knight f3 that wins the queen and black's better because the king's got nowhere to go uh so basically king takes his played <clears throat> but the idea here obviously these two squares are ruled out so bishop takes d4 yeah in slow motion <laughs> just to get h4 for the queen now white played f3 here if he plays king g1 then knight g4 is strong with the threat of queen h4 for example here queen h4 and then we have check queen takes g3 and black ends up better in this position the most incisive move technically is actually c5 which destabilizes white structure uh, and the idea is basically to get the d file with rook d8 later but also simply in this position the rook maneuver rook f5 is strong and and simple for example like this this is strong for black strong enough very good position uh so after f uh, so bishop takes d4 f3 was played uh, if c takes d4 check knight g4 rook moves to give the king air check queen takes we have a similar line that we've just seen where either c5 or rook f5 are strong uh now just just as a sanity check on this this whole rook h1 you might ask well could could he have like taken here first and then rook h1 let me just check that interactively with you bishop takes d4 doesn't seem to work here either e takes or c takes is better for white pardon me e takes is better white not c takes e takes hitting the queen the point is hitting the queen now the check this doesn't work because this line that we saw earlier fails knight f3 check queen takes f3 because we're hitting the queen so that's why this particular move sequence is staggering that the rook h1 it's a staggering move sequence in this position to play rook h1 and, and then bishop takes d4 it's this move order which is trickery <laughs> resourceful <clears throat> move order wonderful isn't that check so anyway in the game bishop takes d4 uh so we've examined king g1 not working or or taking um now here also 
let's look at e takes d4 in this position as well because isn't this similar to what we've just seen as a, as a refutation well in this particular case there's a check and then knight g4 yeah this this doesn't work too well because we get this kind of position now here again a rook f5 is interesting uh but there might even be other stuff but rook f5 is dangerous or even rook f6 and h5 this is this is just really dangerous for whites king safety if ever plays king g1 there's queen h2 and, and mating <clears throat> so say like this it's it's horrible for white <clears throat> so yes it's, it's interesting that um here the defense chosen in this particular position is f3 now the bishop just drops back so we're equal on material but black's got a raging attack 94 check bishop c7 pointing at h2 now potentially king f2 the king tries to evacuate over to the queen side rook d8 cutting the queen king's journey a little bit this facilitates the king coming to the queen side more but check and now the queen simply goes over here with queen e5 it's switching over here and it's horrible the light squares are particularly weak in this position for white and note the queen is gliding on light squares yeah threatening queen a4 checkmate here queen g2 check knight c4 yes this does not look pleasant <laughs> with things like queen b2 here that stopped rook d5 we have g5 now knight a5 and the point of rook d5 it can swing with rook b5 in in some of the variations now rook b5 will be a killer move and in fact after bishop d2 we see that possibility white just resigned here after queen d3 check um let's follow it through so king d1 knight c4 is the most incisive for knight takes e3 being threatened among other things <laughs> bishop g3 is also apparently uh, pretty strong <clears throat> just to threaten mate as well uh so this position knight takes is is hopeless isn't it check here is actually a crusher because if king d1 if takes then we take on d2 if king d1 rook b5 is a false mate in in five now yeah this this is uh going to be amazing the king is absolutely defenseless there's beautiful lines <laughs> yeah <laughs> i know we're far from the final position but um yeah it looks as though yeah this is this is it really what does white do <clears throat> queen e, queen h3 take here we've got this killer check to distract the queen um if the queen goes away from f1 the queen takes f1 checkmate the king can't go there so what is what happens we're have two in which case knight g2 check queen b1 knight f4 wins the queen yeah it's just carnage in this final kind of position it's carnage as you might expect look at the black pieces and look at the white's king um yeah <clears throat> uh, please let me know about the experimental format i just really wanted to um put out this game video 
um, fairly quickly because I've, I've noticed that I haven't been doing too many master game videos uh, recently and I thought um, I could just interactively check out the game with you as well so it makes it more fun and, and convenient for me just to quickly present an interesting game so I hope you don't mind and uh, comments questions likes appreciate it thanks very much